increasing food production in this module we will learn various methods of increasing crop production high yielding variety of seeds can help in enhancing production the methods that can help in increasing food yield are a improving high yield varieties b using high yield management methods and c crop protection management water is another crucial factor as both inadequacy and excessive water can affect productivity of the total water intake only a small amount of water is used by the plants the major portion of it is evaporated in the atmosphere through the process of transpiration transpiration takes place through stomata present in the leaves so farmers invest more on irrigation facilities electricity bills pesticides and fertilizers thus agricultural officers advise farmers to cultivate dry land crops in less water areas recently farmers are trying drip irrigation and sprinkler irrigation to prevent water wastage in drip irrigation water is supplied through small pipes these pipes have small holes through which water passes drop by drop in sprinkler irrigation water is sprayed into air through sprinklers the small water drops fall to the ground and thus the plants get water plants absorb carbon dioxide from air and water from soil and produce food in presence of sunlight in addition to water plants absorb different types of salts from the soil plants require salts like nitrogen phosphorus and potassium in larger quantities these are called macronutrients the nutrients which are required by the plants in smaller quantities are called micronutrients these include manganese boron zinc copper molybdenum chlorine etc nutrients present in the soil are consumed by plants and are replenished or returned to the soil in different ways when plants die and decay the nutrients are returned back to the soil it is a natural method of returning back nutrients to the soil crop rotation adding organic manure or chemical fertilizers etc are man made processes of returning back nutrients to the soil
Usually, farmers grow different crops in different seasons. While cereal crops take lot of nutrients from the soil, legumes add some nutrients to the soil. Growing leguminous crops result in an increase in the quantity of nitrogenous salts in the soil. Thus, farmers often grow leguminous crop between cereal crops by alternating cropping system or by mixed cropping. Crop rotation is the process in which one crop is followed by another crop on an agricultural field. For example, after cultivation of paddy or black gram, groundnut has to be grown, followed by paddy again for the cycle to continue. Leguminous plants have small nodules on their roots. Several types of bacteria live in these nodules. These bacteria absorb nitrogen from the air and convert it into a form that can be used by the plant. After the crop is harvested, the roots remain in the soil and the soil gets some of the nitrogen in this way. Nowadays, a bacterial culture is mixed with the seeds. When the seeds are sown, the plants are able to produce more nodules on their roots. Apart from this, there are various kinds of blue-green algae that add nitrogen to the soil. So, if a leguminous crop is rotated with a cereal crop, the leguminous crop replenishes the nitrogen taken by the cereal crop. If more than one crop is cultivated in the same field, then it is called mixed cropping. Mixed cropping helps in increasing soil fertility and crop yield. Lemon, palm granite, papaya and pulses like red gram, black gram, green gram, etc. are cultivated as mixed crops. Growing corn with beans is an example of mixed cropping. Organic manure is produced by decaying plant and animal wastes. Organic manure adds more nutrients to the soil. Because of humus, the water holding capacity of the soil increases. Natural organic manures are generally divided into two types. One, concentrated organic manures and second, macro-organic manure. Powders of groundnut, castor, coconut, neem, jatropha seed are the examples of concentrated organic manures. Animal excerta, compost, etc. are examples of macro-organic manure. By organic manure, we normally mean the plant and the animal residues in the field, such as 
stalks and roots, cow dung, urine, etc. Panchagavya, a natural manure, is made from milk, curd, ghee, dung, and urine of cow. Coconut water, sugarcane juice, and banana paste are also added to this mixture. Panchagavya increases productivity. It is also used as food for poultry and fish in ponds. Farmers grow some crops like bear seam, sun hemp, lobia, green gram, etc. so that they can be ploughed back into the soil. If the total weight of a green manure crop in a field is 8 to 25 tons per hectare, the amount of nitrogen it provides on being ploughed back into the soil is 70 to 90 kg per hectare. Farmers who have no time for making green manure are suggested to use green leaf manure. Farmers often are able to make out from the color and texture of the soil what types of crops are suitable for their field. Nowadays, agricultural officers and soil testing technologists test the soil and suggest the types of crops that can best grow in the field. Testing also informs the farmers about the concentrations of nutrients in the soil. This helps the farmer to select the type of crop, manure, fertilizers, etc. and its quantity. This prevents wastage and minimizes investment. Regular usage of chemical fertilizers for 20 to 30 years damage soil fertility. Yielding capacity of soil depends on availability of nutrients in the soil and suitable physical, chemical and biological characters of soil. Organic farming is useful for maintaining soil productivity. In organic farming, farmers use natural manure and natural pest control methods. They also practice crop rotation and mixed cropping systems. In this type of farming, farmers use biofertilizers instead of chemical fertilizers and synthetic pyrethroids to get higher yielding. Generally, biofertilizers are of two types. One is nitrogen fixers and the other is phosphorus moralizers, solubilizers. Biofertilizers are useful to maintain soil health and productivity. These do not have nutrients in them like organic manures. They are also called farmer or eco-friendly fertilizers. You may have heard names like urea, NPK and superphosphate. 
These are chemical nutrients. These are partially or completely synthetic in origin. Plants get nutrients from the soil and the quantity of nutrients decreases if plants continue to absorb them. Thus, chemical fertilizers are added. The percentage of nutrients differs in various chemical fertilizers. Observe the table to see which nutrients are added to the soil by various chemical fertilizers. But it is very important to put the right quantity of fertilizers to the soil. It is also important to know the best time to add the fertilizers. Farmers must also examine the best way to add the nutrients to the soil, that is, whether to sprinkle them in the field or to dissolve them in the irrigation water.